welcome back all forest dwellers to the dark forest. I hope that you all are having a fabulous night. Tonight's tale is about another forest, not the dark forest, but this one is titled The Silver Mist Forest. Sit back and relax, toast up those buns, and let's get spooky. Deep within the mountainous valleys of my home state, I found a strange forest. It was called the Silver Mist Forest, but no one could ever go there. I stumbled upon it one evening while hiking throughout the wilderness back in 1998. I wandered off the typical hiking trail while I was in the adventuring mood and had all but gotten lost in the dense pine trees when I saw an old wooden sign which read, the Silver Mist Forest. Cautiously, I journeyed further into the woods. I had with me a compass and one of those old emergency satellite phones in case I really needed the call for help. I headed east and I kept walking, traversing the rough terrain. I must have been caught up in my own mind or in some kind of a daze because, for whatever reason, I just kept walking around without realizing how far I had gone in. A bizarre atmosphere loomed over me as I walked deeper into the troubling environment. Before long, it was getting dark and a thick fog was rolling in from a nearby hollow. The fog scattered across the mountain, obscuring the places in between each tree and turning it into a maze of obstacles. An odd feeling lingered in my mind. Maybe it was my paranoia, but I swear I kept hearing someone behind me, stepping with my every step. I didn't expect to be there at dark. I trekked onward, aided only by a small keychain flashlight from my car keys. Then the footsteps got louder and faster. I looked behind me, peering through the cloud of fog, but I couldn't see a thing. By this time, I decided it was a good idea to head back. I turned around going west, but the noises seemed to still follow me. Every shadow and shape in my path seemed a potential danger as paranoia gripped me. The darkness echoed its blanket and hollow emptiness at me in waves. My imagination then decided to mess with me. The idea that perhaps a bear or some other animal was the cause of these noises entered my mind and once it was there, I couldn't shake it. The footfalls seemed to grow closer and my sense of danger heightened. In sudden panic, I made the mistake of running. In a full sprint, I took off, passing through the mist and dodging the trees. Embarrassing as it is to admit, I was genuinely in fear for my life. Something about that place really had a hold on my psyche. Then. When maneuvering through the narrow spaces between two straggly trees, a jutted out branch caught me and sent me veering to the side and falling backwards. I lost my balance completely and fell hard on the forest floor. I laid there for a moment, catching my breath and looking up into the sky beyond the tall trees as the natural light faded. If something was coming for me, I was as good as dead, but to my surprise, the noise was gone. I wondered, did I outrun it? Was it all in my head? I sat up and tried to reorient myself, but when I looked at my compass, something was wrong. The needle on the compass was spinning around and around like crazy. Did it break in the fall or was something affecting it? Luckily, I was able to follow some nearby power lines back to safety. As I came closer to the main trail, my compass oddly started working again. I made my way back to my car just as the stars came out to decorate the night sky. As I drove off, I saw an unusual light in the sky. It wasn't a plane or anything like that. I'm still not sure what it was, but it shined an eerie purple glow. I was hesitant to call in the unidentified flying object, but that description certainly fits. At this point, I just wanted to go home. That night, I hardly got any sleep. 
I just kept thinking about my experience. Every time I'd close my eyes, I'd see the pine trees of the silver mist forest, the fog rolling in, or the treetops extending out into the open skies. I'd hear the ominous sound of something approaching or seeing the bright glowing purple light in the sky. That night, I dreamed of running through the darkened forest, of weaving between the tall trees in a hurried attempt to get away. But what was chasing me, I wondered. The dream had felt so real. I could feel the forest floor, the fresh night air. I could hear the crickets and sense of danger of something approaching. What was I running from? I needed to go back there. Something was pulling me back. It was like a piece of me was still there. This time, however, I'd go in the morning. This time, I'd be prepared to see something strange. I made my way towards the main hiking trail, driving my usual route, with the tall pine trees scraping the sky on either side of the road. Suddenly, something stirred in a nearby bush. A dark, hairy mass appeared from the foliage. It darted its way onto the road ahead. In an instant, I slammed on my brakes and narrowly avoided hitting it. There stood a human-like figure, completely covered in hair. Before I could get a good look at it, the creature ran off. It disappeared into the thick wilderness never to return again. What the heck did I just see? I sat there in the middle of the road for a while shocked and dumbfounded at what had just happened. Maybe it's humbrous, foolhardiness, or something that came over me, but I kept driving. It would only get weirder from there. I looked down at my watch, inexplicably, it had stopped. I parked my car at the trail entrance and began the trek into the woods. I entered into the silver mist forest, traveling across the tough terrain once more and heading east in the direction of the sunrise. The forest felt alive and active, as if every tree was conscious of my presence. It felt even stranger than that before. The environment seemed to hum with electricity. The atmosphere surrounded me and clung to me like a blanket. The air was thick and hardly breathable. Again, the fog rolled in, covering everything in an impenetrable haze. A man stepped forward from the mist. Startled, I jumped back. He was wearing a green forest ranger uniform with identifying patches on his shoulders and front pocket. What are you doing out here? You're not allowed to be this far off the trail, he said in a commanding voice. Oh, sorry, I was just looking around, I said nervously. I thought about telling him about the strange thing that ran out in front of my car, but he seemed like a no-nonsense kind of guy. I'm going to need you to turn around and head back to the main trail now, he said, giving me a stern look. Something didn't feel quite right about this guy. His voice sounded almost unnatural, like a stage performer delivering a line. It was only then that I noticed that his name tag was blank and that the patches on his shoulders were upside down. His gaze harshened as if he noticed that I had noticed. Turn around and go back to your vehicle, he said. Despite my suspicions of the man, I followed his orders to avoid getting in any trouble. Uh, yes sir, I replied, and began to turn around. As I was walking towards the entrance, I heard him say, Remember, you didn't see anything. Understood? I looked back over my shoulder and I saw the man vanish into thin air. It wasn't just the fog covering him. He disappeared entirely before my eyes. I kept walking back to my car. I knew then that something was very strange and seriously wrong about this forest. Either this place was messing with my mind, or the strangest of beings had claimed it as their home. As I walked further and further away, my mind seemed to clear more and more. There's no way that just happened. I must have imagined it. There's no way, I told myself. 
I had to be sure. I began the walk back towards where the man had been, but as soon as I took a few steps, a figure began appearing from the mist. It was a frightening specter in the shape of a wolf. The creature's eyes shined an eerie diamond brilliance and its body gleamed a bright silver. This bizarre figure was no ordinary animal. The wolf began to speak in a haunting and uncanny human voice without ever moving its lips. Turn back, it whispered. The silver wolf took a step forward. I stood frozen for a moment with panic growing within me. Turn back, it said again, increasing its volume. I could hear the sound of its speaking both in my mind and in my ears. The specter walked towards me yet again. I got the most intense feeling of fight or flight I have ever gotten in my life. Turn back, it wailed. I took off running as fast as I could all the way back to the main road. A primal and animalistic need to escape consumed me. I scrambled to the sanctuary of my vehicle and got in. I hurriedly pulled the door shut. As I drove off the trail entrance, I saw something lift up from beyond the pine trees. It was much larger than any bird, a man-sized winged bean. The giant bird glided effortlessly through the sky. It moved with all the ease of a fish swimming through water. Its wingspan was massive. As it swooped lower, I saw it had the light gray skin and glowing red eyes. It scowled down at me. The creature began to follow my vehicle as I drove, as if seeing me off and making sure I was leaving. It circled above a few times and then flew off, vanishing out of sight. I drove away at full speed and went straight home. I never went back there again, but to this day, I routinely think about that forest. I still see that place in my dreams at night. I asked around to my friends to see if they have ever heard of the Silver Mist Forest, and to my surprise, some of them had stories. They told me of whispery voices and singing that led them out in the forest. They told of unearthly glowing objects and flashes of light out of nowhere. They said electronics would mysteriously stop working as if there was some sort of interference. One of my friends said that she had been hiking there and suddenly she got an odd feeling that she wanted to leave. That theme repeated in all their stories. The thought of randomly popping into their minds that they had to get out of there. It was as if the forest had its own way of keeping you out or letting you know that you shouldn't be there. Another friend of mine told me that he had gone camping there, only to wake up with his tent and all his things back on the main trail. The Silver Mist Forest is the strangest place I have ever been. The word haunted doesn't cut it. It's a mystery that pulls you in, but turns you away before you can understand it. It shines in the distance of our knowledge, but faded from sight when we approach. It's a place off limits to reality. A place that human beings aren't allowed to go. The reason I felt compelled to tell about this decades later is that a few days ago, I saw in the newspaper story about the area, which said that a massive fire ripped through the forest burning everything away in sight. I don't have to worry about some idiot like me reading this story and heading out there now. That's the end of the Silver Mist Forest. Whatever was there has taken its secrets with it. However, it's not the only place out there like this. I know it's not the only place. You should be aware of that. There are places on this earth where monsters roam, where unexplainable lights glow in the sky, and where people and animals are not quite what they seem. You just have to know where to look, and sometimes, if you're like me, you'll find it by accident. Whoa. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this story tonight. You know, at first, I was thinking it was a dog man out on the road. But then, when she met that mysterious park ranger that disappears and then some crazy silver werewolf creature speaks to her, I knew it was a werewolf. 
And then later when she was leaving, something about that big giant bird with red eyes? I was thinking maybe a mothman or a thunderbird or something like that. Anyways, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends, and again, like always, spread me like butter.